Hi, I'm Daniel Bergman and I'm Robert Hansson. You're watching Fly TV and today we're doing this. Uh, we are at a stream called Elzon. First I had a bigger fish uh, who just murdered the fly just when it hit the surface. Proper mountain brownie. Yep. Time of the big lunkers. <laughs> Let's go get them. I'll give it a go with the nymph. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. from Amanas with a shopper and now we're sitting here in the middle of nowhere. Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we traveled west, mm. uh, closer to the Norwegian border. Mm. Uh, we are at a stream called Eltson, which is a lovely trout stream. Mm. Looks like it. What are we planning to do here? We stay here over the night. Yeah. Uh, so we um, are gonna expect some different conditions. Mm. Uh, it's not so warm. Not so warm at the moment. Uh, but still a lot of hatching insects. Yeah. yeah. Dry fly, streamer, some nymphs. Mm. Yeah. And you brought some streamers from our yeah. last episode. Of course right? I did. Yeah, I've of been course. starting tying some too. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> well, so we're gonna fish for trout. We have them rising down there. Yeah. So let's get going. Got a face full of meat. Uh, well, first I had a bigger fish uh, who just murdered the fly uh, just when it hit the surface. And then a couple of casts later, uh, this beauty decided he was hungry. Proper mountain brownie. Let it go back. 
Awesome. Yep. <laughs> hey, uh. <laughs> Something strange with this pool because they, some of them are just completely silver. Whoop. It's a small one. <laughs> so near the bank. Just a small one, we let it go. Bye bye. Look over there. On the dry fly. <laughs> Lovely. Just when the sky opens up and, I mean... <laughs> what size is it, Daniel? Nice. Not so big, but it's strong as hell. Come on. No. No way. It's using the current really well. Come on! Seriously? Okay. Ooh, another good rice out there. Ah, it's a good fish. It's a beautiful fish. Ah! ah. Look at that beauty. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Ah. Well, <laughs> shit happens. <laughs> A beautiful fish. And he took that Duret fly uh, just after I saw him uh, rise. Next cast, it was like in slow motion, and bam, awesome. But I saw another fish right out there, just when I was fighting this one. Uh, so we'll see if that one also wants to eat. And on dry fly, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Great. After 2,000 casts. Well, I caught one up there in the ah, good. bend, too. Ooh. They're so strong. Yeah. Hold on. No, it came off. <laughs> well, well. Just came over here to talk with you if you caught anything. <laughs> yeah. There are some fish rising up there. It was cool. Yeah. Even if it's windy like hell now. But... It is. It's, yeah. it's a pain in the ass to try to place your fly where you <laughs> want it. Was that fish rising over there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a couple of times. Um, I don't know if it was picky, but the main problem was to get the fly in the right place. Mm -hmm. To get the get, get a good drift. Yeah, I know. What are you fishing with? Frubber. Frubber <laughs> fly. <laughs> There's a dragon under your skin. A friend that knows where you've been. Knocking at your door You let him in, let him in, let him in You feel it, you fight it But he knows just how you like it He's your pusher man He's your pusher man You roll it, you light it There ain't no way to hide it He's your pusher man He's your pusher man The clouds roll over your
your eyes You're fixed in paradise The screams from the threshing floor Saying, let me in, let me in, let me in Well, we're not going home early tonight. No. We had a proper dinner. Now night fishing starts. Yeah, Time probably. of the big lunkers. <laughs> Let's go get them. Yeah, you should have way less spooky now, so. Yay. Seven sunsets since you've gone. Lying awake until the dawn. So, healthy brownie here in the dark. Just uh, under a tree, even when it's so dark. Well, have you seen it? No, I heard it. There's a big stone there, right? Well, this one again, control it. You keep it away from that rock? Yeah, I see that now. The reflection of it is so small. <laughs> you never know when they're so strong, so. No, that's sort of a problem. That's big, but it's behaving like a big one. <laughs> ah, it's a nice fish. Here we go. Whoa! <laughs> <sighs> Just when we were about to give up on, on the night fishing. Mm -hmm. Look at that. <laughs> okay. I can't really tell what's back and forth. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh. I'm very grateful every time I can, I can be out here and take people like Daniel or someone else here, because uh, we have a unique opportunity to be here, uh, thanks to Ron uh, Sami community. It's such a wonderful place. I'm Göran Jonsson, and I'm the manager i Vindelfjällens Samicenter ekonomisk förening. Vi har ett utbud av fiske på fjällen inom Vindelfjällens naturreservat i Västerbotten. Och det är mer som fiske på vatten som inte är upplåtet i vanliga fall utan det är vi inom Samebyn som har det här utbudet som är då anpassat till renskötsens arbetstider och vars renarna är. Elson som det är nu det stället där är fisk, de här lite mer kräsna fiskarna vill vara för att få de här häftiga fiskeupplevelserna. Det är då ett sjösystem som kommer från högalpint fjällområde där vi i övre Älvsvattnet där vi har vårt sommarvister för renskötseln. Och det är en stor sjö med djupt vatten också vid källflöde direkt från marken och så är det här kallt vatten. Och den går då via en mindre ånet i nedre Älvsvattnet som är liknande och väldigt djupa i de där sjöarna så det är god, god miljö för röding. Så välkommen! Right now we have come to a place where the water is moving a lot faster than, than further downstream. Uh, I thought since there are not really fish rising and it's a bit windy, we're going to try it with a small nymph. Um, and uh, on this leader, just 
not too far down, I'm gonna place a indicator on the leader just to be able to see when the fish takes. Uh, just about, depends. Uh, if you allow it to uh, be far up on the leader, the indicator, it will be more likely to, for the fly to move well and uh, also fish deeper. If you place it near, it's very easy to see when the fish takes, but uh, it won't go so deep and also it will have a little bit un more of an unnatural uh, behavior in the water. Uh, but when I place the indicator, I use a needle like this. It's a the vision strike indicator. I just, there is some pre-cut uh, pieces of plastic on the needle. I use this plastic tubing, attach the hook on the leader, push it over. There is plenty of wool. I will add just a little bit of white wool here. Use a pair of scissors, it's normally the easiest. You can have these prepared in small bundles like this in your pocket. And uh, you put the, the fur in the loop and press it in so it stays there. You can also adjust it where you want it on the leader. It stays there when you're casting and everything, but and it doesn't kink the leader at all. So it's a really nice way of uh, having an indicator. Just um, cut it off. Nice cut finish like this. A little bit of floatant maybe, but it floats very well as it is too. Well, Daniel missed some fish on, uh, on the dry fly here, so I'll give it a go with the nymph. Just cast it up, follow with it, retrieve the line slowly, so you have tension with the line. And there was something. There, ah, missed it. But it's so easy to see with these indicators. Yep, got one. <laughs> Just when you let the, let the water rest for a little while, the fish feels much more safe again. <laughs> this was tiny, but <laughs> so fun. And as you can see, even when it's really small fish like this, they're really aware of that you're here. And, uh, and to catch a fi big fish, it's so important that, uh, well, of any kind of fish, it's never easy to catch a big one, but for trout especially, they, the best opportunity you have is when they have no idea you're at the place. That's when they're, they could think about feeding. Now it's dead again for a little while. Nope, oh, there was one. <laughs> Simple as that. Small lymph, an indicator maybe. It's less than one meter up on the, on the leader. And uh, try to give it a free drift so the indicator doesn't be affected by the, by the fly line, just like, it, just like you would do with the, with the dry fly. That works definitely the best. I did the funniest thing. Uh, I was actually aiming to, to fish from a fish we had seen further upstream, uh, but just to be careful, uh, I just lobbed the fly south just outside of me, uh, just to make sure I didn't spook any fish <laughs> before hooking them. <laughs> and this guy came up from nowhere. Sort of just saw it in the corner of my eye. Crazy fighters. That's enough from you. Come on. Whoa. Look at that beauty.
since we we seen uh, maybe like two two rising fish or something in this pool, um, but we know there's quite a lot of them. Uh, I decided to go for sort of a big uh, sedge imitation, and then I'm having like 40 centimeters of, of nylon in between, and a small uh, vidda puppa, uh, Thomas Ros uh, pattern as a dropper. And the trout actually took the, the pupa. So that setup worked out. It's a good uh, fish searching uh, style of fishing. So we'll see if it works again. I just started in this pool. There we go. Finally. Incredible how picky they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I think the main problem is the drift. Yeah, yeah, you need to get it exactly right. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, <laughs> that felt so good. <laughs> Finally, they're quite hard. <laughs> Glad you caught, caught it. Your uh, fire rig there. Yeah, Magic. yeah, it works well. Uh, <laughs> but it, not all the time. It seems as if you ha need to get the drift. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they just ignore it. That's what uh, I thought too. Tried some different flies, but it's more matter. about the drift. Yeah. Oh, look at the color. The color, <laughs> especially when you put it underwater, all these red yeah. dots appear. Incredible. Glowing. It's like a piece of art.